Welcome back to my wood shop. Last time I demonstrated how to make a loom for doing twined bags. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a loom for doing twined rag rugs. Now if you've been following my mohair cinch videos, you know all the techniques already for doing the twined rag rugs. You just need a loom and the best thing to make them out of is old sheets. So join me for part two when I'll demonstrate how to actually weave the rugs. Today I'm going to show you how to make the loom. So I make my twined rag rugs in two sizes, 18 by 24 and 24 by 36, which is actually twice the size of an 18 by 24. So basically all you need to do is know how to cut your wood and drill holes again. That's what I like about twining, is the equipment is so simple, you can make it yourself with a minimum amount of cost. So I cut my wood into one and a half inch strips. So if you buy a one by two, it'll already be one and a half. So you can buy one by two and that'll be the right size. If I'm doing an 18 by 24 inch rug, I am going to cut my top and bottom bars 22 inches long to give two inches extra on each end. And the top and the bottom, or excuse me, the sidebars, I'm going to cut 25 and a half so that I have the 24 inches and another inch and a half to allow for the uh, top board to be screwed on. So I cut my end pieces uh, 22 and my top, um, excuse me, my side pieces 25 and a half. And then the first thing to do is to mark holes in the top and bottom pieces, the shorter ones. Let's set these aside. So I want to mark them at one inch intervals so that the pegs are spaced one inch apart. And I'm going to start two inches from the side. So I'm going to mark 18, um, for 18 holes and then two extra inches on each end. So after I've got them marked, and I'm using a forcer bit again, so I have flat bottom holes. You can just use a regular bit if you want. And then I have my back fence set so that I'm going to drill the holes in the exact middle of the board. And then I'm just going to rear my holes. so that I have 18 holes since it's going to be 18 inches wide. And I'm drilling them approximately half an inch deep. So I have cut my dowels to use for the, for the pegs. I'm going to, I cut them two inches long and I drilled my holes a half an inch so the dowels will stick out above the holes about an inch and a half. And I'm using quarter inch dowels I don't like to use them any thinner because they tend to break when you're weaving. So quarter inch dowels work fine. Drill your holes half an inch deep. Cut your dowels two inches long. So I'm going to go ahead and finish drilling the holes in this top bar and then I'll catch you in a minute. So I've moved from my wood shop into my finish room because my wood shop is so large and so much metal is in it that it echoes. So hopefully the sound will be better here. So I have lightly sanded my two upright bars, set those aside, and I've lightly sanded my two bars with the 18 holes across, lightly sanded those, and then it's time to put my pegs in all the holes, and I like to cut mine in bundles, so I tape them together and cut them in bundles, and then I put a, a dollop of glue on a board. And then I just dip my pegs in that glue, just hammer them into the holes. Some of them are so loose I don't even need to hammer them. So I'm just going to put my pegs in all the way across. And some of them are looser than others. But uh, you can have one too loose, throw it out. If you have any excess glue around the base of them, be sure to wipe that off. 
So there's really not much to these looms, just bars with pegs in them. So after I get the pegs in and the loom screwed together, then all I need to do is put a little coat of finish on. And normally I would put a little linseed oil in, on them, but I've got my uprights out of red cedar and they don't take oil very well. So I'll probably use a little shellac on this because that's a kind of a loose one. So I usually make my out of scrap scrap wood because I usually have some kind of scrap since I have a wood shop. But if you buy one by one by twos that will be an, an inch and a half in size, you can buy them in pine or in oak if you want a harder wood. It really doesn't matter. There's not a whole lot of strain on your looms, so pine ones work fine. Okay, so I have my 18 pegs in, and then the next step is to attach the top and the bottom to the side bars. So I already have one of my top bar, actually already, already pegs glued in. So then the next thing is to screw the top and the bottom on. The only thing about screwing them on is you want to make sure that you get it squared up. So I want to just make sure it's edged edge up here at the top. And then you want to take your speed square or a framing square. Make sure it's squared up. Put the other screw in. And then the same with the other side. Now if your wood is hard, you probably want to drill a pilot hole. But this wood is very soft, so... Let it turn it around. Put the other bar on. So this is a project you can finish in a day, half a day actually, it doesn't take a whole lot of work. all there is to, do, to assemble it. So now you have your 18 wide and your 24 long. You're ready to start weaving. That's all there is to making the loom. So gather up your old sheets or your old rags and for part two we'll actually start the weaving process. So thank you for watching. Join me next time.